So I'm so happy to invite you to our talk today, Danielle. So everybody, I've, I've asked, we have a couple of folks who are coming in to tell their stories today about their own Divided Woman experience. And this is Danielle Lajoie. And she and I met um, through reaching out to people looking for real women to tell me their story. And Danielle and I spoke on the phone recently, and she had her own very powerful Divided Woman story. So I invited her here to come and share it with us, and we could have a dialogue about you know, how we can get to the heal the divided woman. So yeah, so jump in at any point and share your story with us, please. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever you want to begin. So I'm like, that's so wide open. Oh my God. <laughs> well, okay, so, so let's start with where, where you and I started. So you so you have recently had some changes in your life, right? Yes. So let's start there. Okay, fair enough. I'm, I'm like, do you want to start with childhood trauma? <laughs> um, so the past few years of my life, uh, I've gone through a massive upheaval and, and change and uh, awakening, really. Mm -hmm. So, And that's what uh, really resonated with me when I read about what you wanted to discuss today. Mm -hmm. um, so I've... I've kind of gone through a uh, process of going to marriage counseling and having the revelation kind of come about over the course of a year uh, that, you know, there wasn't really two people participating in that marriage counseling <laughs> process so right. much. Um, my ex-husband traveled a lot for work. And, uh, and so after a while, we kind of, I went to him and I said, you know, we either need to get divorced or you need to really show up on a regular basis and stop traveling for work because, mm -hmm. you know, I respect that you love your work, but at the same time, if we're working on our relationship, right. I can't fix this alone. And so um, he, he did pull back on the traveling and he stayed in town. And I did ask for a separation at that time mm -hmm. as well. Um, there were some really painful aspects of the relationship that I just felt like I needed to relieve some of the pressure mm -hmm. uh, in some way. And um, and so we continued to go to marriage counseling, but a ways into the process, he kind of came to me and it, his own words were, you know, I'm just not as interested in the therapeutic process as you are. And so, you know, there's that lovely saying, I think it was Maya Angelou, I might be wrong, about when people show, show you who they are, are believe, believe them. them the it first is definitely time. Maya Angelou. Well, yeah. I, I did not believe him for many, many years. But at that moment, in, in that specific comment, mm -hmm. I thought, okay, this, this is time to stop. If that's mm -hmm. really true, then, you know, the, there's really no point continuing. Right. Um, and so I had been with my ex for 15 years. So that was, and I'm 43, so that was basically my entire adult life per se. I mean, I don't think you become an adult in your late 20s necessarily, mm -hmm. but you know, that's the majority of my adult life. Right. Um, and uh, so that's been a real life-changing experience, you know, just not being in that partnership Mm -hmm. But even more importantly to me, what became evident very quickly just in marriage counseling, while yes, it is true that I can't work on our relationship and fix it alone, at the same time, what's most important in the marriage counseling process or in any therapeutic mm -hmm. process is that what you're looking at is yourself and, right. and what's your role in that. And... Um, and so that's been an interesting and wonderful and painful struggle. Mm. Um, and I have, when you were talking about um, the Misora and the Mipe, I was like, it's really interesting because I feel like I have been oppressed in both of these ways. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So I found it very interesting that you were like, well, you can't, you can't be both. You have to be one or the other. And I was like, man, I'm really hard pressed to pick one. And I get that, you know, you can have both aspects, but um, I think that that's something that 
has actually been one of the most painful parts of my struggle personally mm. is that I have had this aspect of perfectionism and you know yes I can do it all but at the same time um, I have never wanted to do it in the same way as other people mm. so there's this you know massive push yeah. and pull in in that way yeah um so that's and i'm not very good with living in the gray area as most people that are perfectionists mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> struggle with yeah wow um, so so that's something that right now um i've gone through a few different uh career paths in my life and um i some people talk about failing upwards in it, with a negative connotation mm -hmm. and I kind of feel mm -hmm. like well I've failed upwards but I don't mean it in a in a bad way yeah um, and uh, and so some of some of those things that I've gone through have also been really polarizing in in what I was pursuing in those areas I pursued musical theater and, mm -hmm. and TV and film like I wanted to do that from when I was two years old mm. uh, until around the age of 30. And I got a degree in musical theater and I was an illegal immigrant. I moved here from Canada and figured, you know, I'll show up in Hollywood and I'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, and I did, but that was an interesting and long Probably process. Probably painful too. Yeah. yeah. And what I struggled most in that area with is that um, I love performance and mm -hmm. I love uh, bringing people joy and, you know, creating mm -hmm. that experience. Mm -hmm. I am not okay at all with the culture of Hollywood, particularly, you know, prior to the Me Too movement, mm -hmm. um, which quite honestly, I think we're scratching the surface as far as yeah. like really changing the climate yeah. in Hollywood. It's I'm take like, a little while. yeah, it's not like we're, you know, casting truly average looking people in films yeah. anytime yeah. soon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, so I, I really struggled with that. And ultimately, I, I felt like this is really soul crushing to continue pursuing something that feels so superficial mm. compared to what you feel when you're actually participating in it. Yeah. Um, and I also recognized that I wasn't helping myself in terms of like planning for my future. Mm. And so, you know, I went about to really dive into financial mm. uh, gain. And that was fruitful. I mean, I succeeded at it, yeah. but I was intensely unhappy. Mm. And so I, I invested in real estate and I sold real estate. And quite ironically, after having just told you about really not feeling okay with the, the politics of Hollywood and, you know, everything being about how you looked, uh, what I did for five years to set myself up financially before I went into selling real estate was I danced in Vegas on the weekends. And I did that some of the time while I was still pursuing acting. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of became apparent that, you know, I'm just not okay with Hollywood. Yeah. And I need to do something else. And this is what I'm going to do short term. Yeah. So. I parlayed all of that into that's how I started investing in real estate yeah. was, you know, I, I, I didn't develop a drug habit or no, a drinking no. habit in the clubs, which is also very, very endemic. Yeah. Yeah. Very common. Yeah. Um, and you know, like I feel like in retrospect, um, I was super judgmental mm. of my coworkers and, um, I feel really ashamed about that now mm. because I've become a lot more aware in my own journey of where that impulse comes from. Um, and, and so I feel like, you know, everybody is just trying to do your best and it's, 
Yeah. It's not my place to judge how these people are choosing to deal with their pain in that right. moment. Yeah. So um, I, I feel really badly that, that I've done that in the past, but at the same time I go, well, you know, when you know better, you, you do better. You do better. More Maya Angelou. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of wow. what Danielle, I'm focusing is, on now. It's so powerful to hear that, to hear your story, seriously. Because I'm, I'm listening to it, and, and something you said really struck me and at the beginning. You said, you know, I, I struggle with, you know, because you said, I, and you're right, I said, like, you have to be either me, Pierre, me, Sora, and I, I think I misspoke. Because I think what, what I mean is that when we're little, we get put on a track that we're going to be one of these, mm. right? And not necessarily that we are one of those, mm. right? And so whether our parents do it to us or culture does it to us or families say, you know, a real woman looks like this or a real woman looks like this, we get put on a track, right? right. And we may resist it because we don't fit that track. You know, I have a client who, when we were talking about this stuff, she's like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a doctor and my parents keep asking me when I'm going to have babies. Like, you know, it's like, I, I don't, I don't care. Like, it's really not what I'm about, you know? Right. And so, listening to what you're describing, I would say that whatever track you were put on, you tended more toward the me pay being like, no, I'm going to own my life. Right. I'm going to make the money. I'm going to have the, you know, I'm going to have all the pieces that I want for myself. Mm -hmm. um, but also that you are conflicted about it. Yeah. You know, because, it, and that's the divided woman, right? Because we, we are taught that we're supposed to figure out how to have it all right right like we're supposed to figure out how to be in that place where we can make the you know make all the money and then come home and and then have dinner ready and you know all that craziness um mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a crazy story about that Susie cupcakes i'll tell that story later but um so how so how for you how are you finding you know, I, 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 it's so obvious to me that this has caused you a great deal of pain. Like, I can just see the suffering when you talk about, you know, how much judgment you feel like you had and on those women that you worked with and looking at your own story. Like, where does that take you now in terms of, like, what you, what you want for yourself in terms of for the compassion that you have for yourself? Like, where does that take you now? Um, well, that's, that's the hard part mm -hmm. is that I have, uh, I sold real estate for about five years and had success with that, but really didn't enjoy it. And then kind of got lost in being primarily in a supportive role to my husband and, um, I managed the real estate that we owned mm. that like I had built all of that like he kind of just said do whatever you want I trust you mm. so I managed all of that but he would also you know when I was in this supportive role and managing three properties in three different states and you know collecting rent from multiple people and arranging repairs and everything he would also say things like well you don't work and we don't have children, but we also don't have a property manager or a landscaper or a housekeeper or like, I don't do any of those things that a lot of people in LA do. Right. Um, so, <laughs> so there was this real lack of acknowledgement of yeah. the amount of work that, that it takes to do all that mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and I really got lost in feeling overwhelmed mm -hmm. by all of that partially because it truly was a lot that I was doing but also a good portion of it was because it was unacknowledged as amounting to anything right so I think that you know like that's that's where you get into this conversation about, well, things can be hard, but then you can put suffering on top of it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's what that situation was. And so coming out of, of the divorce and having sold most of the real estate, I still have one property that I had purchased on my own before 
we had gotten engaged. Um, I'm now in a place where I've been doing odd jobs, working as a handy person. Um, I, you know, do light electrical, light plumbing, painting, mm. carpentry. I do all kinds of stuff that um, is also an interesting experience as a woman mm -hmm. because I frequently showed up for jobs and had people go, really? <laughs> You're sure you can do that? Oh. I'm like, I wouldn't be here if I didn't think I could do it, quite honestly, because mm -hmm. that's way too stressful for me mm -hmm. to deal with that. As a perfectionist, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm like, I'm not going to take the job if I don't think I can do it. Exactly, exactly. Um, so that's been interesting. And so right now, um, I'm really uh, trying to simply be patient with myself. Yeah and sit in the gray area and um, decide like what is next. Because mm -hmm. there are three ideas that have been bumping around in my head for about a year now, mm -hmm. and I can't seem to settle on one. And so um, after about a year of being in that space and feeling like, well, you just need to be patient and you just need to be patient, I got to a point where I was like, you know what, just do one of them. <laughs> and if it's the wrong thing, oh well. Yeah. So, um, so I picked the one that was most, <laughs> most a cop out to be real uh -oh. blunt about it. Um, but quite honestly, the easiest to kind of initiate and have it be something that, well, you could do that and do something else. So uh, I started my own business where I do interior design for outdoor spaces. Oh. So I do, like, my focus is in my marketing is to luxury apartment and condo owners, oh. patio and balcony yeah. areas. I do potted gardens, outdoor floor coverings, furniture, art, and lighting installation. Mm -hmm. um, I love gardening, and there's a creative yeah. aspect to this. Um, so, but the other two things that I've considered doing uh, are just like a straight art mm. kind of pursuit, visual art, um, or I've really seriously considered going and getting a doctorate or a master's and going into therapy. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure if I would want to do like individual counseling. Mm -hmm or treatment research mm. because I actually had um, what I think is a really powerful idea for a, a way to incorporate spiritual healing in a real tangible physical way without needing to bring God into the conversation mm -hmm. at all in the same way that your friend earlier was talking about the, these horses mm -hmm. really spiritually heal people, mm -hmm. that's another great modality where you have this physical connection and, and a very intense feeling of connection without needing to have a conversation about yeah. God or Yahweh or mm -hmm. Moses or mm -hmm. Jesus or whoever the case may be. Yeah. Um, because the other thing I've learned in, in my therapeutic journey is that people often struggle with uh, spirituality yeah. um, in that process. And so I've thought, I mean, though I didn't personally have to deal with narcotic or mm -hmm. alcohol addiction, mm -hmm. you know, perfectionism is absolutely it's, it's, a process It's a addiction. behavior addiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. I, yeah. That's right, a behavior, not a process. But, you know, I've been a workaholic. That's yeah, an addiction. That's definitely an addiction. So um, I at one point probably considered myself an atheist as well, although mm -hmm. for most of my life I'd say I'm more agnostic. Mm -hmm. um, but not surprisingly, I was raised Roman Catholic, and that was part of, <laughs> part of the pushback. <laughs> when I was yeah. like 10, yeah. I decided I wanted nothing to do with the church. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> we could have a whole conversation about that. Yeah. But so listening to all this, I you know I have one more question for you, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. But you know, 
Is there anything that I could that I could offer at least right now? I mean, certainly we can be. I'm happy to stay in contact because I think that there's a lot that we can do together or talk to talk about together that might be useful. But um, and certainly I want to hear more of your story for my book if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but is there anything right now that you that would be useful from your journey? You know, for anybody who might be watching or might you know watch this video later that that I could answer based on my research that that might be useful to you from this point of view? Anything you could answer. Um, no, I don't think, think so. I mean, okay. I think what you've presented today has, mm -hmm. has been helpful. And uh, when we first spoke and, and you kind of said, does any of this resonate with you? I think I said, well, it kind of sounds like, you know, what happens to you if you go through therapy and you feel like you've mm -hmm. gotten anything mm -hmm. from it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, um, but I think it's always helpful to hear something in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that just this development of your idea that you've had could help a lot of people. And, and I think that, you know, it's, it's clarified some things for me as well in, in a different way. Oh, so, yeah. So thank you for oh, that. Thank you, Danielle. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. Awesome.